Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with a, another model tutorial. With a paint crackle effect is a very effective weathering method to show uh, cracks, age and paint flaking off the surface. We're very familiar in many polyurethane and acrylic products. It's widely available and indigenous to a certain brand such as Vallejo or Army Painter art brands as well. However, it's not so common in solvent products. Crackle normally occurs where the coat underneath will dry slower than the rapid drying coat on top and will seep out cracking the paint. An adverse effect of putting the wrong top coat or paint on top of the surface will cause that. We'll experiment by using two incompatible products in a fine controlled environment to create the exact effect we want and seal it to protect it as well as experiment and make it more interesting in line with natural weathering effects. Here's a line of products I intend to use. This idea came when I produced a failed model by utilizing the Army Painter Quick Shade to see how effective it is as a wash ink product which isn't too bad it's a bit of a silly idea of a very large container you dunk a miniature you shake it and it's all shaded though the color was attractive enough in the mix of metallics and dark earth tones to look pretty gritty and nice with armor i mistakenly put a clear lacquer coat on top and it crackled very poorly thus uh, dejecting my effort for that particular project. I've also prepared some undercoats with various colors that will look good in between cracks and paint chipping off. First step, I'm going to be applying a premium hard hold fast drying hairspray onto the surface, which is an excellent barrier between all paints and surfaces, which would be very easy to flake off any excess paint I no longer want. This can also work in conjunction with the salt weathering technique. A good look at the color and consistency. You can see why I do like the uh, luster. The instructions outline to apply with a brush or put the whole figure in there, take out and shake. It will give a gloss tone and to use the exact brand of uh, matte coat to clear it as a finish. Test one, we're only going to apply the wash on half of the surface to see where it will crackle and where it will not crackle. We'll just gently apply, equal it out. We can wipe off excess with a tissue, but I think that works enough. With test number two, we're only going to be applying in splotches and mostly at the bottom for as realistic effect as possible and in the top section we're only going to put the odd tip test number three i'm only going to be doing uh, panels so we're only doing it sections that is going to attract the crackle effect. It's pretty translucent, a bit thick so it makes a tad of a texture. The uh, color tone and the way it just falls straight into panels is quite nice and it just blends a bit in a delicate gradiency. I actually do like this color. We allowed a little too long for the undercoat to dry due to bad weather. Applied wet coats of airbrush ready lacquer paint in fairly thick coat. It's still wet, but we can see that the texture hasn't gone on all too well and it is uh, reacting. We've got a bit of uh, orange peel going on and uh, some sort of uh, lifting. We're going to wait for a few hours and see what finish effect we get randomly. No crackle, but we're going to have some fun, scratch it up, try a different effect. And over that effect, we're going to crackle again in a limited amount of time. We allowed too long to dry. Round two, we've applied a clear coat to seal the last layer of hairspray. 
hairspray for further chipping and a final coat of the Army Painter wash. We're going to use a slightly different green so there'll be a multi-layered chipping effect. Wait to us two hours. The surface was still ever so sticky to the touch. We're starting to see some early signs of cracking. Allow it to dry. And have a look at what results we score. Not being too pleased with failing to repeat the same result, we've used a whole array of mediums to see if anything is easy to repeat. Here are the original with the army painter and hairspray chipping off. The middle one has become interesting but still not the desired effect we're looking at. Going into other types of washes and thinners, the results are completely different leading us to experiment further. Once we start getting into white spirits and the oil based stuff we were able to get a pretty decent effect of craze. Going into brake fluid, Mr. Weathering finish which rewarded us with the best finish. I repeated it a few times in various stages of our drawing. And then off to the strangest of finishes such as uh, Vaseline, Decal Set, Tamir, Cement, Alclad Gloss Clear a couple of times. Now interestingly with the Army Painter after it's fully dried and cured and you spray some lacquer thinner on top of the lacquer paint it is going to craze as such but it's crinkling upwards not necessarily breaking up and showing the inside so this is the original fault that I came across and it's a very cool effect army painter lacquer paint then lacquer thinner on top a paint chipping technique similar to hairspraying may as well be mentioned in this one is also toothpaste so it's actually very easy to manipulate and uh, damage the paint more so than even hairspray. However, I'm going to have to put a gloss coat over and see if it's going to seal and do any further damage or if this is a red herring. Very similar with the Vaseline, you've got all these interesting effects and it can wear away as such, almost giving the illusion of a wood effect. The toothpaste has been lacquered as if you're due to hairspray and the paint still peels off. I find this to be a very poor weathering method. Once you chip with this your model is forever going to be easily damaged. I will never repeat this experiment again. Same goes with the Vaseline. The best effects we got hands down to the left is MIG pigment fixative pretty much a slightly thickened up white spirits and to the right we've got the Mr. Weathering finish uh, color filters they gave a very consistent crackle we're going to do more tests to see if we can get the same crackle upon multiple surfaces I've repeated the effect on clear coat and it looks pretty good. We'll put a mat on it and see how that improves. These two have received a clear coat to seal it and it's quite resistant. It's not lifting. This is excellent news. The effect is permanent when lacquered. To repeat one of our successful results, we're going to apply the wash in a sludge manner as such and then immediately a wet coat of lacquer paint colouring it all in. It will start to crackle as it dries on top. For MIG the exact same thing. Apply an even coat to all the surfaces. Turn the compressor on immediately and spray a wet coat. 
And we've also can't forget with the we Mr. Weathering Color. Interestingly, the two products behave very similar where they've broken away from the highlighted areas and also caused a little damage in the lower areas crazing in large flat surfaces like the spoons. The effect is very interesting and consistent among the six pieces. The hairspray, we will do some tactical chipping and scraping to have an appearance a little more to our taste. The paint wears away as normal. A bit of paint chipping and it's looking pretty interesting and reasonable where the metal would wear out and where it would go to bare metal. Back to the army painter for all pieces. We put a light coat to fill in the panel lines plus to put the final clear crackle. The wash has been applied. We're going to allow 30 minutes to two hours to dry. A bit glossy and a sticky consistency. Next we're going to go for a lacquer flat. My choice would be Guy Notes. Now the goal is not to colour in the whole thing, but to just dust it in some areas and colour in some panels. And that's it, partially cover it. We still have a gloss lustre. It's not very visible, but I can assure you the effect has taken hold. We need to have a dead matte finish to bring out the crackle. couple of days later, here is the final result. The effect is very subtle, sometimes giving large crackles, sometimes small, these tiny little chips and incisions separating from the edge. The effect is fairly nice in my humble opinion, however a bit randomised and not good if you're going for a controlled look. If you're doing something very heavy, especially on something small, it may work. So it's not a definite must-do method or complete rubbish. It's up to the individual. We can definitely see that a large plane surface will produce more interesting and randomized effects. And I really enjoy this. And I'm definitely going to do it on much larger surfaces. Not a big fan of uh, the small surfaces of getting an exact crackle. However, just in paint wear alone, it is fairly interesting. Paired with the right undercoat, this can definitely be an amazing technique. All in all, I'll definitely continue to play with it. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. Check out all the social medias and whatnot down below. We have a second channel where a lot of content is being created on. Catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching.